How's it going everybody? Today I wanted to go over a really quick method for building an efficient steam box. Now over time I've done a couple of different versions of this box, but I would consider this to be one of the cheapest and definitely the most efficient steam box that you can build. One of the biggest problems that I always see with some of these steam boxes you find online is there's only a single wall as a barrier to hold all your temperature in which means all of your heat is going to radiate through that single wall system. And so my ideal method is actually to create a two wall system using the stove pipe and a wooden box. I started out by cutting the stove pipe down to its final size, and then I can fit this wooden box around it. This really is just simple construction pine. There's really no reason to go too complicated with this part. Now with this version, I fit the stove pipe really tightly into the wooden box and that did work very well. But what I should have done is left just a little bit of a gap on each side of the pipe, giving me more room for the insulation foam. I'll show you that here in a second. But here you can see the dual wall system and this is what keeps all of the temperature inside the box and doesn't let too much of it radiate out. Once I had everything fitting together nice and tightly, I took the top panel off of the box and sprayed the corners with the insulation foam. It would be better to get a little bit more of the insulation foam along the sides of the stove pipe, which is why I'm saying it's better to have a loose fit than a tight fit, but this did end up working very well. Now the box that I built here is just over eight feet, which means the inside capacity is an eight foot piece. And to make sure I had enough foam, I bought two of these cans. I would say if you're going to leave a little bit more space, consider buying three or four of these great stuff cans. These things are amazing, by the way. If you've never used it, this great stuff insulation foam makes this whole process so much easier. And then I could put the top panel back on the box while everything is still wet and then flip it over and do the exact same on the other side. I just installed this with two inch wood screws. At this point you have to work fairly quickly because this foam is expanding and so you gotta screw the end cap on as fast as you can. When it comes to the door, you want to make sure you have a piece that's big enough to cover the entire front and just put any old hinges that you have on there. You can see in this original version, I actually used a solid piece of wood. This ended up not being a good idea at all because the steam will warp the heck out of that piece of wood. So it's better to use something like plywood. The thicker, the better. And then I installed these latches to make sure it pulls the door nice and tight against the front surface so it doesn't release too much steam. Now here's where a bit of the controversy comes in. There's a lot of people out there that say that you should have just a little bit of pressure inside the steam box, but I've never done that. I've always been worried about causing something like a steam explosion coming out of the side of the box. You never know where that pressure is going to release and the steam can really burn you, so I've always just left it open to the air. And this is the vent that I use. One of my favorite things that I did with this steam box is I installed it underneath this workbench. For me, this is such a perfect situation because not only do I have a space out of the way for all of my steaming to be done, but I can also use the top of the bench as the form for all of my bending. It was a bit of a challenge getting this installed properly under here. You want to make sure that the whole box leans backwards just a little bit so that the water drains out the back. I found this ratchet strap to be extremely helpful for this. I decided to go really simple with this and just use some blocking to screw everything into place. Watch your head. Another really big consideration is if you can imagine all of the steam inside the box, we want that steam to penetrate all four sides of all of your wooden pieces that you're going to bend. And so not only do we need to make sure that none of the pieces are laying flat against each other, but we also have to make sure that they're up off of the bottom of the pipe. So I put together a lot of these pins and decided just to drill these straight through the bottom of the stove pipe. And these just got glued and hammered into place. Once the pins popped through the back side, I could just cut them off with a handsaw. Over time, I've tried a bunch of different ways of generating steam for the steam box, and I found this Rockler steam generator to be the best and cheapest option that you can get. This definitely isn't something you want to try and cheap out on, and actually these really aren't that expensive anyway. So I do consider this to be the best option, and I'm going to be putting a link down in my description if you want to see the one that I used here. This thing ended up working amazing. The steam gets pumped directly through the bottom of the box using this adapter that Rockler gives you, and I just decided to silicone this thing into place, and this worked perfectly. Just remember to place this inlet somewhere near the back of the box because steam rises and it will rise towards the front of the box. And then once I connect all the hoses, the box is basically done. The only thing I didn't show here was drilling a hole in the back of the steam box to allow the water to drip out because you're gonna end up with a ton of condensation inside and you want a way for that water to release. Otherwise you're gonna end up with a pool of water in the back of the steam box. And the process at this point is really simple. You just plug in the steam generator and you fill the water up to the line that it tells you and it starts producing steam. It's as simple as that. Now keep in mind, there's a lot of people who will tell you how long to leave wood in a steam box for, but if you build one like this that isn't pressurized, you're gonna have to leave it in for at least twice as long as what people tell you. So you're gonna have to play with it and figure out what works for you. 
but I think the rule of thumb is 45 minutes per inch of material, but I usually leave all my stuff in for about two hours, and that seems to work really well for me. Now what you see me bending here is actually the runners to a toboggan. Now if you want to learn how to make a toboggan, that's going to be the subject of my next video. I'll be linking that at the end of this video, but also down in the description if you want to see that. Anyway, thank you all so much for watching. If you have any more questions, anything I didn't cover in this video, feel free to leave comments down below. I do read all of my comments, and I will be down there answering questions for at least the next few years, probably. Uh, so thank you all for watching. Catch you all next time.